So I'd like to formally start the EOS Cub Week 2020. My name is uh, Tiziana Ferrari. I'm uh, uh, proud of being the project coordinator of EOS Cub and uh, to welcome all of you for this uh, virtual conference that we originally planned to have in uh, beautiful Karlsruhe. Unfortunately, this is not possible, uh, but we have a magnificent, I think, auditorium, um, a collection of offices around uh, Europe and perhaps beyond Europe. So we're really, really happy to have this conference happening as we originally planned and we are very grateful and we would like also to thank the colleagues from KIT who have been uh, working uh, with the communication and event team to, to have the meeting happening physically. So welcome again to all of you. We are very happy to have um, a very rich uh, program. Uh, we started already yesterday for those who attended the consultation day with the executive board of European uh, Open Science Cloud. We have uh, two days ahead of us, uh, today and tomorrow, with uh, a rich program of uh, 18 uh, sessions and a closing plenary tomorrow. Uh, we have more than 700 uh, registered participants to the various sessions, so we are grateful that you can uh, be here uh, and attend uh, regardless of the difficulties that we are all facing and sharing. So with this, uh, welcome to everyone. I'd like to give uh, the floor to Sara, who will uh, give uh, some uh, information about uh, the event and the participation rules. Thank you, Tiziana. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I will uh, just remind you a couple of housekeepings for, for today. So this event is recorded, so all the sessions also will be recorded and the recordings will be made available uh, at the end of the meeting together with all the presentations. Uh, some of the presentations are already linked to the agenda, so you can already check them out. Uh, I remind you to please do not activate your microphone and videos unless you are requested by the, the host. And uh, if you don't see the buttons at the bottom of the Zoom window, just move the mouse on that window and the buttons will appear. Uh, if you have problems with the audio, uh, try to switch off your video and usually it works. Uh, for this session, please use the Zoom chat to enter any questions or comments that you have for the speakers. Um, finally, I just want to remind you that uh, there is a poster and demo competition ongoing. So it started uh, last week. Today is the deadline. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, please cast your vote by today, 5.30 p.m. Um, summertime. Uh, you have the links uh, on, uh, on this slide and the links are also available uh, in the agenda page. And that's it from my side, Tatiana. Thank you, Sara. You will see uh, how to switch from one session uh, to the next uh, at the end of this opening plenary, so stay tuned uh, for that. And um, it's now my turn to introduce uh, our two speakers and invite them to our virtual podium for the day. Uh, the first speaker will be Per Oster, USCAB uh, Project Director. And the second speaker will be Lina Munari from the European Commission. Peroster is a director at CSC, the IT Center for Science in Finland, director for business in science and growth. And Lina Munari is a deputy head of unit. You know Lina very well, of course, many of you. She is uh, in charge as deputy of e infrastructures and EOSC at the DigiConnect. So please, uh, Per, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Tiziana, and uh, welcome to everybody. So um, I will try to give you and uh, a overview here uh, on on the journey that we are on towards the European Open, Open Science Cloud and what uh, the EOS Hub project uh, is about and our contribution to to this a major effort in, in Europe we could, we, we, uh, that we have. So 
So, use cab uh, to uh, give the uh, the kind of corporate slide here. There is a massive project, large budget on 30 million. There is more than 100 uh, or more than 150 staff involved uh, from over 100 partners here. So the EGI Foundation in Netherlands is coordinating the project, and uh, they're, they're, uh, the core partners here comes of course from the uh, there are these 20 digital research infrastructures the e infrastructures egi eu dot cdi and the e indigo data cloud so we have a joint offering of services software and data uh, together with the a number of other uh, research infrastructure and e infrastructures uh, that have come together and and start to implement eosc so uh, ben, there is some sorry, yes interrupting you for a second if you are uh, navigating through the slides we are still seeing the introductory one so maybe you have to check okay them. then we can see what's uh, this is an issue that sometimes happen here in if i stop sharing and uh, start from the beginning again it might help This is an issue that I've seen before with uh, Zoom. Now you should see a slide that talks about mission. Is that correct? I, I cannot see any slide. Okay. Um, do you want me to share your slides? Yes, we can try that. That's interesting. I will stop my sharing here. Okay, I get an advice here from my colleague in Finland. Uh, Okay, I think we can see Sarah's uh, slides. Yep. You are, I think, on the right slide, so I think we can proceed with that. Yeah, okay, it's... Uh... Yes, can you get it in, in... Oops, I have to come back to that. So I see it also. So next slide, please. So, uh, then there is a clear mission here. The EOS Cab projects, mob, uh, the EOS Cab projects mobilizes providers of pan European relevance offering services, software, and data for advanced data driven research and innovation. These resources are offered via the hub, the integration and management system of the European Open Science Cloud, acting as a European level entry point for all stakeholders. And here, the keywords here, the integration and management system of the European Open Science Cloud, and acting as a, a entry point for all stakeholders. So this is really what we try to do here now. The infrastructures together with a number of uh, thematic uh, providers and uh, uh, other service providers. Next. So, it, it, this is organized in a way that we were trying to have a nine key exploitable results and innovation uh, roles here. So it is uh, built from services, what we, in what we call the EOSC service portfolio. We have a EOSC portal and marketplace where these services are presented to the wide community together with training courses and material. Uh, interoperability and integration guidelines. In addition here, there is a digital innovation hub, and I will come back to this and explain it. We have a special uh, activity to, to contribute to the rules of participation that is, is also worked on in, in the EOS working groups. Uh, the service management system, all the processes and everything that is needed to really build something so complex as uh, EOS. And 
uh, an internal services in the hub portfolio, and that is the baseline services that use to, to run a, a number of the basic functionality and that other service providers can make use of to uh, uh, make their services integrated with, with EOSC. And then it's about business and sustainability models. How do we take this into a continued future? Next, please. So EOS Cub and the portfolios here. We have, you see in the bottom, the hub portfolio, and this is the internal, uh, and that is to serve the hub operation and service providers and enable the EOS operation. And the, in this way, help uh, other services to integrate, other providers to integrate the services with EOSC. In the top, it is the EOSC service portfolio, and that is the external facing portfolio that everybody that is available for anybody. And that should be of direct benefit for researchers, common and thematic services. Uh, and and uh, also, of course, for service providers, there is an indirect benefit here. And as always, it is to enable excellent research and try to do things here that fits research at best. We could foresee a development with where we might have regional hubs. We have now regional uh, projects uh, uh, and thematic projects and other groups that are providing services. Next, please. So if we look on this top uh, part of this, we have uh, the, the key thing here is the thematic services where uh, that address is specific research community and are provided by uh, specific research communities, typically in combination with an e-infrastructure provider. And these come stand from ESFRI's national project in international initiatives. In addition, you have the services provided by typically the infrastructures, EGI and EUDAT and Indigo Data Cloud, that are the common services that provide generic functionalities that can apply to multiple domains. They, are, uh, they come from these uh, technology providers here and the organizations that are also behind and building the infrastructures of EGI and EUDAT, that's the ones who are really delivering the services, of course. And uh, that are the components. Uh, please uh, stay here a bit. Go back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, that are the components in the hub portfolio. And here you find the things like cloud compute, containers, notebooks, orchestrator, data repository, data transfer, data share, data, data sync and share and more. The basic things that are uh, so to say for general use and almost anybody can make use of some part of it. Next, please. And uh, in the hub portfolio, in the bottom layer, if you uh, was thinking about two slides back, there you have this fundamental stuff, fundamental things where we have a lot of things that we that are brought from the e-infrastructures and see what how does it fit in the in the EOS context and what is necessary here to really build. A, a strong service uh, delivery. So here, of course, it is the authentication authorization infrastructure. We have the portal and the marketplace, accounting, help desk, monitoring, order handling, messaging, all these basic things that need to be there. And uh, then other external services can plug into this. Next, please. So, and these things are then collected and now described. So for anybody interested, you can pick up the integration handbook for service providers. Describe what it means to integrate with EOSC through this cab. And there is the audience here is of course existing and future EOSC service providers. This uh, handbook covers the overview of EOSC and EOSC Hub, onboarding on the EOSC portal, how do you get your services there and how do you adopt the system service management and so on. Integration with federation services, managing of research data, alignment with service management system and, uh, and the future of the EOSC Hub, how this is taken into the continuation. And uh, you can find it, search for it in Synodo there and you will find it, it has it. Yeah, DOI there also. It's a registered piece of data. Next, please. So, 
the key thing here that was in the project from beginning are of course to get the, the research community engaged and really explore what are the benefits here of getting together both with the uh, a more uh, uh, systematic service provisioning and I think coming together with other research communities and share experience and, and learn from each other. So in the beginning, from the beginning in the project, we have had humanities uh, or research communities from the humanities, physical sciences, earth sciences and biological sciences involved. And all these thematic services have integrated with core, uh, EOS core services. So if you look in details here, it's 40 technical integrations done and uh, in, in the resulting here in 30 services that have been published in the EOS portal. Next, please. So just to, to highlight a few of these real success stories, we have the language research, Clarin. So it's European Research Infrastructure for Language Resources and Technologies. They have uh, doubled their visitors and uh, a new collaboration with uh, Europeana here during in due course of the project. Uh, there is the European Network for Earth System Modeling. So it's a, a large number of countries now that are, are involved in this. It's an open coast, coastal circulation on demand forecast. Uh, and there are now users in 23 con countries. And we have a, a quite, what already uh, was quite well established uh, VNMR, a worldwide infrastructure for NMR and structured biology, also increased their number of users and, and the amount of, of simulations submitted here on the federated uh, infrastructures. And a lot of countries also beyond Europe here is using this infrastructure. And we have the orchestrator here, the Dynamic On Demand Analysis Service, DODAS. Uh, so there are four new communities with high en within high energy physics, astroparticle and gravitational webs. It's a huge amount of uh, jobs that have been submitted here. And the large, this is a very distributed uh, infrastructure with over a thousand clusters uh, around the the globe really involved in this. We have Daria EU digital research infrastructure for the arts and humanities and they also double the visits uh, of their uh, portal and sites uh, and uh, also attracted more customers for their uh, data repository. Earth observation pillar, a set of services in the field of earth observation uh, have lot done a lot of computing and uh, utilized a service from TerraDue and uh, the amount of data here, Earth observation data have increased fast uh, in, due to the uh, integration of the services. Next, please. So just yes, to, to show that this is now uh, these thematic services really become mature services that can respond also to very urgent cases like the, the COVID-19 uh, research uh, and that is now uh, initiated due to the present situation. And uh, can just mention that they are this team now around uh, the Haddock and VNMR team is around in, in several collaborations here from drug screening and uh, uh, protein protein interactions. Next, please. So there were thematic services, they were there from the beginning. In addition, from the start of the project, we had what we call competence centers with the aim to uh, integrating research infrastructure service with e-infrastructure services. So they, this comes from biological sciences, environmental sciences and physical sciences. So there was a number of competence centers here uh, initiated uh, to co-design user assessment, training and service delivery. Uh, so all these eight have successfully piloted EOS CAB services and there was in total 19 services here integrated with, with the general community services, the, the, the general services that we, which I talked about previously and they have uh, resulted in, in a uh, enhancement uh, of these uh, already existing uh, infrastructures and services. Next please. 
So the competence centers, uh, when the services now have been integrated, they uh, four of them and uh, have been taken to the uh, portal, include plus uh, three cloud services. Uh, so it's the marine uh, Argo discovery, the ICAT, uh, ICAT portal, disaster mitigation, uh, fusion, and uh, three Elixir related cloud from Chestnut, CSC, and EMBL, EBI, also including services there for working with sensitive data, for example, which is an, a, grow, a, a very interesting and growing uh, need. They are now available on the portal and uh, can, can be found there. Next, please. So, there were the that was the communities that were uh, in, integrated and part of the project from the beginning, but that is just scratching the surface, of course, of all kind of research that that could make use of EOSC and the future use and that all kind of research that are taking place in Europe. So we have in uh, what in the project also a what we call an early adopters program. So there have been two calls resulting in 13 pilots and uh, 75 planned integration with ES Hub services. And here we find uh, the supporting fair data, discoverability in cl clinical research, earth observation, open AIDA lab platform for cloud computing and material science and the towards global federated framework for open science cloud uh, and, and bring uh, also other continents in, into this, um, uh, into the EOS hub and make use of it. The EMSO that is uh, ocean observation uh, that have taken part in the project here. EOSC DevOps framework and virtual infrastructure for Enbry FAIR common FAIR data services. Next please. So the uh, pilots continue with stars for all, plant phenotyping, open biomaps, data management service, Vespa cloud, uh, the uh, message IX Globium, which is about future energy system, Ag Infra, virtual research environment to support our uh, agriculture and food research communities, integration of toxicology and risk assessment services into the EOSC marketplace. So here, a lot of very, very different uh, 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 this, uh, research areas and type of services have uh, been, been ex or explored, I should say, to be integrated and uh, come to the portal also eventually, hopefully. Next, please. And uh, if it doesn't stop there, so with communities. So there were all the different research communities from the beginning in the project. We also, how do we bring uh, industry in and looking then on the, on the vehicle of a digital innovation hub, which is a larger initiative from the European Commission, how to bring academic uh, research to industry and, and uh, get the, the interaction and innovation possibilities there. So we have uh, started an in, uh, digital innovation hub driven by EGI, Indigo Data Cloud and EODAT together with three of key partners uh, in, in the project here. And uh, that builds on this EU, EU initiative. Uh, and, and we have taken also, of course, the, these partners have uh, years of uh, experience working with industry and that, uh, that uh, taken into this. So this is to bring in another type of, of uh, interest and potential project. So it started with six business pilots selected during the project preparation and it has been open for, for more here. And the, uh, here is with the intention really to that this should be persist beyond the life of any of any uh, particular support project here. So next, please. So take a glimpse on what we have been doing here. It has been the action, the seaport thing, space weather data for Draco Observatory, the cyber cyber hub. Uh, uh, bot mitigation eng engine, sport smart video analysis, furniture enterprise anal analytics. I, I will not go into uh, the details of this, but you understand it's a very wide and very different kind of things. Next, please. 
Uh, and uh, there are new uh, things on board here that for artificial intelligence for rare diseases diagnosis, blockchain for university certificates. And there is uh, something on in the pipeline here that I think now is, is uh, uh, actually about to start or, or might have started already video coding and compression with, with BBC R&D. So next please. So now you saw all the different communities and initiatives that we have brought together, supported, integrated uh, their services, and everything should come together in the EOS portal. And the EOS portal here, a delivery channel connecting the demand side and supply side. And uh, we should here showcase the potential of integrated and coordinated access to European services, data and other scientific outputs. So bear me with now because uh, the, there is started a new project, EOS Enhance, that have, uh, are now doing a rapid development of the uh, EOS portal. So what I present here might not look the same when you take a look on it uh, uh, next week uh, when you look in the, into the portal. But uh, next please. So the, uh, in the portal here, you find uh, the core services from EOS Hub. There is a unified service catalog and marketplace. Uh, uh, right at the moment we speak here, 250 onboarded services, and you can browse them there. You can order services. You have an uh, My Services and User Space there. It is a website content with the information about uh, uh, EOSC. There is uh, the AI, so how to integrate the help desk, uh, the machinery behind uh, managing the, the uh, processing of orders, monitoring of services. And next, please. So, and, and uh, in, in, uh, in addition, there are a number of processes around this. So um, there is onboarding process to how do we continue to expose more services in the EOSC portal. Uh, and uh, there are services reviewed and, and discussions there with providers, of course. Uh, there are incident and service request management. Uh, so that uh, th if things happening, we can support the services to come back to, to normal uh, procedures again. And uh, then uh, typically what you call customer relationship management, service order and customer relationship, that uh, first contact and, and uh, services, how they should get in touch with the portal, how they should get there. And uh, in all of this is, of course, in, in uh, compliant with the FITSM standard. And I think here uh, we're talking about the portal, but I think the, the boat and the, the, uh, in the top left corner here brings the uh, thinking here to think about it more like a port than a portal. It is a port where services are delivered, where uh, users can come and process are there. It's a whole machinery eventually that will we start to build the, the infrastructure that will be European Open Science Cloud. And uh, there, here you see an, also a number of, of uh, processes that are there in, in uh, the need to, to run and operate the whole thing. So, and with this, I wanted to show how we have built uh, the whole machinery or a, the first taking the first steps towards the machinery of that that will be EOSC. And we have brought the a number of, you could say, the early adopters here that have been uh, willing to jump into the water, try if this is add something for the research communities, if this is really beneficial for them. And in a way, you could say that we are, uh, if you remember the old, uh, uh, from the beginning of 90s, a business management uh, classic on how to sell high technology product to the mass markets. It's crossing the chasm where it's easy to with the early adopters. And then there is a chasm before you get to the mainstream. And the different step in a way are there. But now we need to take the next steps to really reach out to all research in Europe. And I'm 
quite convinced with the force now and where, where we have the support from our governments and from the European Commission and more and more awareness within the research community, uh, I think EOSC will, for, will actually have the potential to bring big science for every researcher. Thank you. Thank you, Per, for this uh, enlightening uh, presentation. And uh, while uh, Lina starts and um, news slides are uh, brought online, I like to say that we will take a question and answers at the end of the session. Um, and also to um, respond to the chat uh, discussions. Uh, for those who were at the consultation day yesterday, there was a very fruitful conversation on what would be the uh, business proposition of ESC, the right balance of uh, standardization, interoperability, and actual integration. So I think uh, today and tomorrow in the coming sessions and with pair presentation, we have seen how interoperability guidelines and the mechanism for federation can in the end empower real end users with the thematic services to, to really get on board and uh, get value for their own, their own science. So thank you, Pear. I think uh, slides are ready for Lina. Lina, I already introduced from uh, DigiConnect. Uh, please, the floor is yours. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm not sure if you can hear me and if you can see me. So uh, before I go further, can you yes, confirm? Lina, we can see you and hear you very okay. well. Okay, very good, okay. Um, so thank you very much, Tiziano, for this, um, for this uh, introduction and thank you very much for Pat for uh, highlighting what the EOS Hub project, uh, one of our flagships, as you can imagine from uh, our portfolio, has achieved over the last uh, nearly three years. Uh, I was the, I had the honor of being the first uh, project officer of this project, and I remember how many times I've read the description of work, so I do remember all these things from the description of work, and I'm so happy to see uh, they're all coming together. Um, and I hope that also, you know, considering the, the quite, well, very open format, because I can see there are people joining from Georgia, there are people joining from different parts of Europe and the world, probably. Uh, it is, even though we are in this very highly unusual circumstances, and we sort of miss all the human bus that goes around these kind of conferences when you organize them on site, uh, we also probably see what are the the advantages of, of having this kind of open format in order to be able to communicate and outreach to as many people as possible. So um, from the commission point of view, um, clearly uh, you've, those who participated yesterday to the consultation days, you saw all these uh, presentations from different uh, key actors now at the governance board, particularly in the you know, executive board, who are uh, been working very hard in order to advance on all those working groups uh, that have been uh, put in place in order for EOSC 2.0, so to say, to take off in the beginning of, uh, of next year. Um, I was asked to, 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 to address this audience uh, by talking about the current and future role of the e infrastructures. And um, coming, having come to this, uh, this, this boat, so to say, through the infrastructures, at this point, I can, yes, you can, uh, you can, you can move on to the next slide if you want to. Yeah, so. Okay, yes, sorry, because we are having a remote uh, progress of these slides by Zara, so I'm not doing it by myself. So, just to just to highlight uh, the fact that the infrastructures are a course that have been uh, put in place and the one that also as hub uh, comes from is obviously comes from a work program 2016 2017 so we are 2020 uh, sorry 2020 now and so a lot of water has passed under the bridge and uh, and the situation when we drafted those work programs and when we drafted those calls were obviously very different than they are now. So at that time, uh, uh, there was a talk about a lot of uh, defragmentation. There was a talk about a lot of 
need for consolidation of the infrastructures and the research infrastructures. And, uh, and this was the origins of, uh, of, of, of these calls. And I must say that at this point, having got, please go back in that one slide. I'm going a bit too fast that I will tell you now. You want to, want to go back. Yes. So, uh, so at this point, we are um, at the point that as to see what we can do when we put uh, a big call out there, putting a lot of uh, uh, sort of, well, a lot of pressure, but a little bit of sort of gentle pushing towards consolidation, that we see what, what is possible. So we see all these static services that have been put in place, all those trials, even a little bit uh, wandering already towards the industry participation, etc. And all this is very useful at this point when we are actually also getting to uh, more um, in grips with how the EOSC will look in the future. So obviously in 2016, 2017, you know, there were all kind of declarations and things, but nobody really knew how EOSC could look like. Already the famous quote of Catherine Sturber from the executive board in the beginning of when the current uh, governance, uh, interim governance structure started its work is that EOSC is, it's like that elephant uh, when and all these blind men that try to understand how it looks like. So clearly, we've come over the time to understand much better how EOS look like. Start having views of you know how should it look like, what are the missing parts, and but the most important thing is that we still have the elephant. It's still there, and it's not gone anywhere. It's still there. It's it's becoming more and more visible, and uh, and as we speak. So uh, I won't go back uh, too much on the, I'll call it in this slide, EOSC 1.0, if I think of the first phase of EOSC as set by the Council of Ministers that we have time until the end of this year to, to, to advance with the interim governance and, uh, and the portfolio that we have uh, been funding uh, the, the, these activities from uh, since uh, a couple of years, both uh, portfolio, which is currently held together, obviously, as you know, by DG Connect and DG RTD, jointly, the EOSC uh, calls are managed by these two DGs. Um, uh, the, the current state of play has brought us to the point that we obviously, what is new compared to what was, what was not there before, is that we have uh, an emerging governance. So, uh, this was a requirement from the Council of Ministers to set this up and, and obviously all these kind of endeavours, they do need governance. You cannot, uh, with your best intentions, to try to uh, run this level of operations unless there's governance. Governance means people and governance means also a lot of interest. Governance means a lot of opinions. But governance means a lot of discussions and I think it's all needed for EOSC because uh, we all need to sit around the table together uh, every now and then argue, every now and then say, uh, find out what are the priorities, why, etc., in order to, to advance. There's no other way, and, 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 and I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. So as you know, uh, the governance uh, will be done. There's, uh, you've already heard it from yesterday's speakers, but if you were not there yesterday, there's European Partnership uh, in, in cooking. Uh, this is uh, an instrument in Horizon Europe. Uh, which is uh, possible. It's not an instrument that you can choose. You have to propose to the Commission to have this European partnership and you have to show the added value of this kind of uh, partnership in addition to what it would be if it was business as usual. So what do we gain more if we sign a real partnership with uh, these stakeholders? And as you know, for this, uh, the draft is about to be published by the end of May <clears throat> together with the other European partnerships that are on the table. Uh, in order to have this European partnership, we need a partner. Uh, it could be any entity, uh, but for this case, the, the intern governance has decided that there is no such entity that could take up this role of representing the EOSC uh, towards the Commission on its own. So it's been decided to set up an association in its own right, which at the same time, at parallel is also being uh, prepared together with the partnership. All this happens uh, very much at the same time, parallel. Uh, it requires a lot of work and coordination, um, but, uh, and which is evident at this point. There's no other way of doing than doing everything in parallel. Uh, very important is the strategic research and innovation agenda, which goes together with the partnership. So once the partnership has been accepted, obviously at that point uh, uh, it becomes the base legal document between 
the Commission and the, the, the partner, so to say, and in this case it would be the Euskal Association. But what will stay and what will be then the future roadmap for what is this partnership going to do is this SRIA, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, which is also being prepared. Uh, we aim, or the, the, um, the members of the governance who are in, pro, in, pro, in, in, uh, in, in, in charge of, of, of this part of the work will hope to open it up for consultation July and September so that the community would have a clear view of what is being proposed and also obviously complementing and, 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 and giving their, their, their suggestions and views. Because EOSC is obviously not only about uh, these few uh, entities that are now currently preparing it. EOSC is for Europe. EOSC is about Europe. And this is why it's very important that also the strategic research and innovation agenda reflects the view of Europe about the stakeholders that we have around uh, the table in the larger sense. About the sustainability, uh, there is, you've seen all these documents that have been going with the very obnoxious names. It started with the strawman, who has, which has now developed into a tin man and suddenly changes gender and becomes at the end an iron lady. So this will be uh, the, the overall sustainability report about how EOSC will sustain itself over the coming years which is also going to be open for consultation. And finally, uh, it is aimed that around October, the association becomes operational and uh, the Iron Lady, Iron Lady report is it's going to be finalized. So this is what I call the EOS 1.0. This is all the way that we've come up with uh, from the beginning of the times, so to say, with the infrastructures from the Connect side, but also, of course, the research infrastructures from the ITD side, plus all the others who are around uh, what we call open science and, uh, and, and the aim to establish an open science club. Now we can go on, Sarah, please. For the next one. So, uh, EOSC in Horizon, obviously, uh, very um, creatively, uh, the new program which follows Horizon 2020 is called Horizon Europe. So, you can see there is continuity. And as well, I want to say there's continuity, of course, in our investments. So currently, what is in progress, you know, that from the DigiConnect uh, side, we are in charge of these last two calls that are out, which, um, which have uh, been published. And actually, their deadline has been extended until mid-18th uh, of, uh, of June. Uh, this little title, by the way, in 07 2020 of course, is the name of the 07 call. And uh, we'll complete the evaluation of these two calls. The text of these two calls uh, is, is the work program text is already very lengthy, so I'm not going into detail, but I'm sure that most people around uh, in this call would know uh, what these two calls are aiming at and, uh, and, and what is the contact. And we would aim for the projects that emerge from these two calls start in January 2021 later. So this is to say as well that even though the time will be postponed a little bit, it's not been... Uh, is not being, um, it, it doesn't affect the final outcome of or the deadlines of when this project will be signed and start. Also important uh, Council of Ministers at the time when they gave a go ahead for the EOSC uh, 1.0 to continue in the interim phase until 2020, uh, said that we still have to obviously assess a little bit the progress by the time the first phase comes to an end, that this is also being prepared. Uh, by the EOSC uh, governance, uh, supported by the EOSC secretariat. And uh, I s understand as well that there's a questionnaire that has been sent to EOSC related projects uh, on how we have fared in this first phase. So the EOSC 2.0, so to say, if I might uh, call it that way, that starts in 2021. So the new phase uh, in Horizon Europe, uh, where are we in planning? Uh, obviously, uh, in June, we will have, like in all parts of the Horizon Europe uh, work program, uh, the, the preparations have started at the orientations level. There's going to be the first discussion with member states in, in, in June uh, on the first uh, Horizon uh, Europe orientations. And from our perspective, we obviously rely much, very much on what we have been seeing coming up from uh, the partnership uh, proposal, the initial elements of the SRIA because these will be the ones that will guide uh, very much the, the progress in the, in the coming years. 
uh, there's going to be consultation towards the first uh, work programs, uh, recent innovation days, uh, as, I, as long as I can see, are still uh, going to be held in September. And of course, the, the, the strategic research and innovation agenda. So to have the first calls launched in 2021, obviously this year is very particular for many ways. We don't yet have the MMR multi-annual financial framework. We don't have any of these programs yet finalized. We don't have the final budget for housing Europe, but uh, this is obviously by the time the EU budget and the, and the research budget have been defined, fined, only at that point uh, money can be allocated to specific programs like Horizon Europe. But uh, nevertheless, of course, we go, uh, go ahead and, uh, and the final sums will be then uh, decided by the time we get there uh, when the financial decisions have been made. Okay, Sarah, you can go ahead. Okay, so going to the infrance, what is the take up point, take off point, so to say? I'd say without the infrance, we would not have anything that Per just has uh, shown you in his presentation. EOS Club is one project, it's massive, it's not only about the portal even though this is often the one that people see as the most visible part, uh, especially if you come from completely outside. You understand that there's a lot of work being happening at the background, whether it's technical specifications, whether it's real use cases, whether it's uh, trying to have the first uh, users to adopt uh, the services, customize them, etc. Plus all the technical work that goes. And it's also very much as a baseline for the, for the EOSC uh, uh, 2.0 core, as we call it now. Uh, we have uh, in our portfolio in Connect, we have EOSCAL, we have Open Air uh, Advanced currently, Freya, which is doing uh, persistent identifiers, we have Okra, which is uh, trialing the, the commercial services uh, procurement, we have also ESC Enhance, which is currently looking at uh, how to how to improve and, and, and make it even more workable, the, the portal that's there, which uh, actually was, uh, came out very early, much earlier than it was uh, foreseen um, due to obviously different kind of decisions that were made at, at the time, the political, um, uh, political uh, declarations about EOSCA, it was also considered to have uh, have something which uh, people can immediately see what is EOSC. So the portal is there, but as you've seen also in the presentation that the EOSC hub and EOSC is not only about uh, the portal. Uh, the EFRAS have been participating to different working groups of the EOSC executive board. I think uh, particularly the architecture, but also the other uh, rules of procedures, uh, participation, sorry, are, 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 are those amongst. Uh, and they are very active partners for consulting and for dissemination of their results. And, uh, and I think if we didn't have uh, this current project, which are from our perspective, uh, very much centered around the in France, we would not have this glue. We have a lot of different items. We have a lot of different issues, so to say, to solve, whether they are about the data interoperability, about the service provision, about the authentication, about uh, the need for different kind of services, whether they're generic or thematic. Without the current portfolio of our projects, we would not have an overview of what this uh, service infrastructure can do when it's done uh, and, uh, in, in, in real terms, when it's being implemented. So it's been uh, very, very useful and, uh, and gives us much more confidence to go ahead, obviously, with, uh, with the next stage. Um, as I said already, we have been piloting commercial services for industry participation through the digital innovation hubs, plus we have the initial use cases, which as you can see, even in very highly um, volatile and uh, let's say uh, un uncertain times uh, as uh, in the car during the current pandemics, we see how, um, how these services can also be quickly adopted and, 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 and used by the communities for research uh, purposes like as we do now for the COVID-19. Also the in France and the project have in a, in a way of course created the sort of baseline for the core and exchange. I just use, it doesn't really matter what they're called now, whether they're generic services, whether it's thematic services, whether we talk about the marketplace, that's just the flavor of how people want to call things. But we still know that we need this core and we need some sort of marketplace or exchange where services can be discovered, the data uh, can, be, can be discovered, can be combined, can be customized. And, and in, in general, made discoverable, 
but also uh, obviously for different research users, uh, help them in their daily work and also validate science and make it reproducible. So I must say that at this point, uh, we can see that the consolidation that I referred to in the beginning is becoming evident. So the infrastructures uh, clearly are still, as we understand that even though in the same way as the EU is a, it's an international or European organization, we still have member states. Of course, in this EOS world, we start having EOS with a lot of common elements, but of course there are still uh, individual organizations who keep on doing what they do and try to do it uh, as well as, uh, as possible. And I think this is also a little bit the key ingredient for, for what is uh, the next step that, uh, that we need everybody around, uh, around this table. So now, sorry, I can go to the next one. So where would be the landing point? I mean, uh, in TS 2.0. So uh, from our perspective, the infrastructures continue to be valuable actors in and for EOS, considering that they have tremendous experience, not only from the projects that uh, we have been funded, but also from the time before. They are able to encompass and to bring together a huge amount of stakeholders uh, and act like the glue between these stakeholders, trying to understand what are the needs, where do we, where can we step in, how can we improve these processes, how can we improve the work of these uh, inline uh, users, so to say, that, that use our services and, and, and struggling with different kind of problems every day that, uh, that, that, that might and can be helped by different technological solutions and, and, and a customized uh, offer that can be provided. Of course, uh, you all heard about the web of uh, data. This is sort of the new kit in the block. It's probably not the new kit I saw yesterday uh, from the presentation of uh, Karl Leuven that, um, that he was describing uh, the web of fair data like being the twin sister of the infrastructures. I would say that it's probably an, a, a twin sister, but I would say that it's probably a, a, a new kit in the block because clearly, you know, obviously all this DNA of the data that needs to be uh, sequenced, if I may use the COVID terms these days, can be, uh, needs to be made, you know, this work needs to be done as well. So all the work about uh, the, 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 the making sure that the, the data becomes uh, more fair, it becomes more uh, open, uh, it is interoperable, it has persistent identifiers, it is easily accessible and can be combined, it's, it's necessary. Uh, so for me, I see this, uh, there was also one of those sort of metaphors in the beginning has been the yin and yang. I still think a yin and yang is one uh, way to, 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 to present these things, but I also think that it's just the natural course of things. You know, the services and the infras were probably much more mature at the time we started. And now we see that there's a lot of work that needs to be done under the, the motor cap, so to say, to make the fair, make the data, which is uh, the fuel for these services also, also, fair, also um, more usable. So as clearly we need to show the added value. We're not doing this just because we like it. We don't no, no do this only because we think that, uh, you know, we, we, this is what we started and this is what we have to go on. We have to show what is the added value. And I think the projects like uh, EOSCAB is also high, so showcasing what can be done. What is the added value when you provide these services uh, and, and, and how can you actually really showcase the difference for an individual researcher or research group or uh, when they have access to, to, to the services, the data and the other technical interoperability and tools that come out from, uh, from this uh, process. We need more rewards and incentives, of course both for using EOSC, but also for making the data fair, for, for highlighting the individual um, input of the researchers and also their, um, their progress towards making uh, data fair. Because uh, as we know, currently the researchers are mainly rewarded by a publication. Uh, we would like uh, to see that also the effort of sharing and, uh, and, and, and making the data also more accessible and, and fair and, and open is, is rewarded. Um, so then I've written the flexible approach to cater for future that's not certain. So we never know what the future brings. Nobody could imagine that we are in the middle of pandemics in, during this uh, time. Uh, and I think 
we should not be scared by that. I think uh, the uncertainty means that we're going something towards something new. Uh, I would like to highlight that there are many actors, you know, we've uh, moved from the consolidation of the infrastructures and this infrastructure towards much more wider uh, stakeholder base. Uh, and as we see, if you have more actors, we need a bigger table. So we don't necessarily need two tables to, to, to have uh, different people sitting around different tables and discussing, you know, whose table is actually bigger and more important. I think we just need a bigger table for all. And, uh, and, uh, and I think only by this way we can succeed. So my final line would be that we are really doing this for, uh, for the greater good of Europe. We, uh, we see that, uh, that EOS can be really a precursor of something much bigger than currently uh, is, is available for scientists and also for the citizens and the, the societies at large when they see the results of science. And I don't think that anybody should be intimidated by the fact that we haven't sort of solved the problem in a couple of years. It is an enormous challenge. And I think the journey is as important as it is the outcome. So, so therefore, I, I, I wish everybody a fantastic time during these two days uh, in this uh, EOS Cub week dedicated on very, very specific panels uh, that can discuss these issues. And I'm sure that together we will come back it again next year or in a couple of years time and can uh, mark much more progress. And I would also like to hear your views, of course, uh, from your perspective, where do you see what are the infra? So this is my final point. So what is the, where do you see yourself sitting in the, in, in the future context? So thank you very much. Thank you, Lena. I'm conscious about uh, time. So unfortunately, I think um, we won't have time for uh, interaction with the audience. But if you have questions from the participants, please uh, type these in the chat window. We will make sure that uh, Lena and, um, and the project can respond to your questions um, and report back at the closing plenary. So um, we we wanted to ask uh, a question to both the pair from the project point of view and Lina from uh, her EC point of view. The question is uh, how the infrastructures can improve or increase their support to EOS and how they should change in their operations in the new scenario where many are around the table. So just a sentence because uh, we needed to start uh, the next uh, session in two minutes. Pair. So uh, if you ask, I think the, uh, the, the importance here is, of course, that the, the, the engagement of various research communities and uh, that really, really continue that work, that that is the, and, and reach out to a more, the big crowd of researchers, individual researchers now that I, I see as the most important thing here, really for, for the next phase. Uh, because we have a cl quite clear understanding on the technical machinery behind. It's a lot of work, but that is work to do. Uh, the other thing requires uh, uh, more more thinking and, and uh, also be, be uh, uh, smart here in how to really reach out. Yes, I, I like to emphasize uh, what Perez uh, mentioned as a key point for um, for the project. Uh, what we have learned, uh, and I know there are people in the audience that are working with thematic services and music communities and the competence centers, outreach, uh, promotion of the services, uh, support to end users, training are key elements as important as the integration part and that's important to bring impact uh, to science and society at large. Uh, we will learn uh, how this has been um, uh, successfully achieved uh, in the two uh, success stories that we will, we will highlight tomorrow in the closing plenary. So definitely this is something we are learning uh, from uh, the project now that we are in the third year. So Lina, uh, to you, how would we change in operating as infrastructures according to the new scenario you have, uh, you have uh, presented? 
Well, uh, how would you change? I mean, it's not really up to me to say how would you change. I think the best way is to understand that this is a living animal. I think a humankind, as we now see during COVID, is very adaptable, but it also needs to adapt in order to, to continue. And I think this is the only way forward. So, so I think the work so far has been excellent. I do not, but I never say that you should rest on your laurels. I think you should always aim to be better, always aim to work further because you are part of the service culture that comes with the and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and so I don't see necessarily uh, that uh, there is a lot that would need to change in terms of, you know, for the goals to be achieved. No, I think we just need to believe that we are actually going towards something which is always going to serve the researchers better and something that is going to serve Europe's needs better. And, uh, and so, yes, and we are not doing it, obviously, the famous quote that we are not doing it because it's easy, but we do it because it's difficult, even though it's fantastic cliche, but I think it holds uh, very well in this place as well, because we are doing something which at the utmost is actually very, very difficult to do well, and to do so that, uh, the, that we can really see uh, things coming, but that doesn't prevent us from uh, from trying. Um, thank you, thank you, Lina. And uh, I see questions uh, in the chat window, so maybe Lina, you can uh, tap um, in in the chat briefly. There are complex questions. I don't think we had the time in order to switch to the next session, but maybe we can take a minute to respond to your question, Lina. So. I think in your presentation you asked what is your view and how the infrastructures are adapting. Uh, so perhaps uh, Per and I can take uh, also a minute to respond to this uh, question and I'd like to bring uh, here the EGI um, point of view. So we see um, from our experience in operating in EOSCAB, uh, uh, EOSC is an opportunity to increase um, the range of scientific disciplines that are being engaged in, and also um, in a way an ability to to serve many more user communities and to also be more visible towards research communities and in the way uh, in a way we are adapting by having stronger collaborations with the research communities by having more integrated uh, provisioning so more than just infrastructure moving to platform and software as a service to provide uh, specific capabilities for user communities, so having uh, an ability to contribute to the service part of your vision. You mentioned the fair data, the web of fair data and the services. We see ourselves as providers and uh, more and more supporting the entire uh, life cycle of our, of our research experiment, thanks to these uh, stronger collaborations with uh, research communities. Fair. Yeah, may I take the liberty to pick up on something because I've seen in the chat here, uh, in the chat, a discussion on on uh, data. Uh, what is EOSC here uh, with the focus on data? And we heard in presentations and talks yesterday, for example, the web of data is used. And uh, I see in the chat there is a concern, but where is the computing? And I think this is something, it's a very important uh, understanding here that yes, it is very much focused on the data and we have made a lot of things uh, to, op with open, to move towards open data and fair data. But data is fine, but without capabilities to do something with the data, it is pretty useless. So we need all the services, in, uh, including uh, computing and other high level services to do things with the data. And the, this is, uh, if we call it open services then, to, to move toward that and we agree on standards, on things we can get interoperable services and so on. This is really a, a need to be part of EOSC of course. So it is need to be a web of data and capabilities to do something with the data, which includes computing of course. So that, that is for me totally obvious and can't be rounded in any way or moved around in any way. 
Thank you, thank you, Per. Um, I see from the chat a few questions from Lina that we don't have the time to take, but uh, important questions from Stelius and others, what will be the key priorities for the coming work program? I think you've mentioned these, there will be consultation, a strategic research and innovation agenda to be defined so that I think there is work in progress till we reach that point. And also uh, Raymond emphasized the importance of research uh, grants, which are the funding stream towards user communities, specific research projects at national European level, a plea for combining these funding streams and processes in funding research reviews in order to make sure that we can have the proper sustainability structures in place and the real ability to use uh, services. I'd like to thank you uh, for your uh, presentations, both of you and also our audience. We had, uh, yeah, we have reached more than 300 participants. I think Sara now needs to give a few instructions on how to join the next session. So thanks again from all of us and uh, to Sara to wrap up the session. Uh, thank you, Tiziana, and thanks to you for the moderation of this uh, interesting plenary. Um, so as for everybody, as you can see on the slide, so now in uh, uh, three minutes, actually, so probably I ask the chairs of the next sessions to, to take uh, two or three extra minutes more, at least uh, to give the time to people to move to the other rooms. Um, we have three different rooms. So in this room, we will have the fair certification of repositories and other data services session. So if you're interested in this session, you should stay here. Uh, for the EOSCAP contribution to the EOSC architecture, the link uh, is on the slide. It's also in the chat and also in the agenda, uh, as well as for the impact of EOSCAP on science communities. So for this room one and room two, you need to leave this Zoom and enter the new one without needing any password. So that's it. Thank you very much and I wish you all a fruitful day. Thanks a lot. Thank you everyone. Goodbye, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.